Hi, good afternoon. It is uh, 2 p.m. It is now 2 p.m. The chair calls this special meeting to order. Uh, before we move to the Pledge of Allegiance, I'm going to do a roll call just to make sure that we do have a quorum. Um, Trustee uh, Stoma? Here. Here. I'm sorry. I'm here. Present. Oh, I'm here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I was daydreaming. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the Astros. That's why I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, Trustee Sullivan? Uh, here. Trustee Murillo? Here. Trustee Vote. Here. Trustee Kane. I'm here. Trustee Pierce. It's not available. Trustee Wilson. And myself. Okay, we do have quorum. Uh, if you can join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Head, has the meeting been properly posted and certified? Yes, I certify it was posted it posted in accordance with the law. Okay, so we're convening the tax rate public hearing. Um, Desiree, do we have any public comments? Madam Chair, we do have one. I'd like to call Earl Brewer. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Earl Brewer. I am representing the executive board of the American Federation of Teachers Union at Lone Star College and our president, Dr. John Bergdorf, who is unable to be here due to doing what he does best, which is teaching our students. I am also a taxpayer. I paid $40.64 this year to support Lone Star College's mission to serve our community by providing opportunities for our citizens to better themselves, provide for their families, and contribute to the common good. I consider $40.64 an excellent value for my tax, tax dollar. We would like to affirm our support for renewing our current tax rate of 10.78 cents per $100 of property value and encourage the Board of Trustees to do the same. Even though these are trying times, we think the rate is still a low rate that fully funds our students' educational needs, maintains and improves camp campuses, and maintains competitive salaries to retain and recruit faculty and staff. This furthers Lone Star College's mission to our community. We think that the proposed tax rate exemplifies responsible, conservative stewardship of taxpayer dollars which is a traditional Lone Star College practice. Since our state government enacted into our tax code a requirement that 60% of governing bodies affirm the passage of tax revenues that exceed the no new revenue algorithm, we urge unanimous vote to affirm the proposed tax rate to fully fund the proposed budget for 2022 to 2023. Failure to approve the tax rate will result in painful cuts due to the loss of $45 million in revenue, which would directly hurt both students and employees in significant ways. On Saturday, October 1st, the Executive Board of AFT Lone Star College met and passed a resolution to present the following statement to the Lone Star College Board of Trustees. Given the critical priority to fully fund the fiscal year 2023 budget of Lone Star College in order to serve the growing educational needs of the citizens of Harris, Montgomery, and San Jacinto counties to promote the ongoing economic development of the greater Houston area and to ensure the financial stability of the over 6,000 employees who work tirelessly for the success of Lone Star College students. The Executive Board of the American Federation of Teachers Lone Star College formally and respectfully urges the Board of Trustees of Lone Star College to approve the proposed tax rate for 2023 of 0 0.1078 cents per $100 property valuation at the special meeting set for Thursday, October 20th. Thank you for listening and for your time. 
Thank you, sir, for your um, comments and for being here. Our next item is the presentation <clears throat> of the proposed tax rate. Thank you, trustees, for joining me this afternoon for consideration of the proposed tax rate. Uh, so first here for the hearing, I wanted to go through what the proposal is. So for the proposed tax rate, uh, the total proposed tax rate is 10.78 cents. This is what our rate was last year, and it has been this rate for several years now, and we are proposing that same rate. The tax rate is split into two separate components, uh, and we take up each one under consideration separately. There is the maintenance and operations tax rate, otherwise known as M&O tax rate. This is what primarily funds our general operational fund. There, uh, last year and in prior years, we had had a M&O rate of eight cents. This proposal does lower that rate from eight cents to 7.37 cents. The other component is the interest and sinking fund rate or INS rate. Uh, this is also for our debt service rate. Uh, so these funds goes directly into a fund specifically for covering our general obligation debt. So there, last year and in prior years, the INS rate had been 2.78 cents. In this proposal, we are proposing to increase that to 3.41%. This, this was presented when we were doing consideration of the budget. And here, this would allow us to pay off $18 million worth of debt early, resulting in a uh, savings of interest uh, over a period of time for the college to pay off debt early. So this is the proposal of the uh, comparing last year's actual tax rate to this year's proposed rates. So for many of us, yes, comparing the tax rate to what our rate was last year is what it is often intuitive. Here I want to go through how the state asks us to view this. For this state calculations, we are required to calculate what is called the no new revenue rate or NNR. What this is, is it basically accounts for growth in property values. So it takes the rate that we had last year um, and how much revenue did, did that generate, and it asks the question on this year's tax rolls, what rate would we need to charge to generate the same amount of revenues? Well, if property values have gone up, then that by definition means that this year's no new revenue rate will be lower than what our rate was last year to generate the same amount of revenues. So that's what the no new revenue rate is. So last year, our total tax rate was 10.78 cents. In order to realize the same amount of tax revenues as last year, this year that effective rate would be 9.16 cents. So that's the no new revenue rate. From there, on the maintenance and operations portion, the state worksheet calculation then allows us to apply uh, an additional 8% onto the operations portion for existing properties. And that's what results in the voter approval tax rate or the VAR. What the VAR does is if we were to pose a rate higher than the VAR, that would automatically trigger uh, an election of voters for that rate. Um, we are not proposing a rate higher than that. Uh, we are proposing, so the VAR is 10.78 cents, and that is the rate that we are proposing. Um, so that is just an important element to understand as the state uh, generally looks at these things in terms of the no new revenue rate and then the voter approval rate. So with those two pieces, then again, our proposal that was included in the adopted budget for this fiscal year is the proposed tax rate of 10.78 cents. This is 17.7% above the NNR. And the reason that is, because I mentioned the VAR allows an 8% growth. The other piece is new construction. Uh, new construction is outside of that 8% limitation. So between that 8% and new construction, 
this 10.78 cents in total is 17.7% above the NNR. So I did want to show them the comparison of what the breakdown is between the proposed and the NNR. In either case, the INS portion, the debt service portion is the same 3.41 <laughs> cents. So really, if we were to adopt instead the NNR rate of 916, that difference between what we have proposed and built the budget based off of, um, and that NNR rate uh, would be that reduction in that MNO rate down to 5.75. Um, and that is where at that NNR rate, that would be $45 million less in revenues than what was anticipated in the budget that we the board did adopt. And we are currently already a month and a half into the fiscal year operating under that budget. Um, it would be a $45 million impact to that adopted budget. Um, additionally, every year when we do these state calculations of the NNR rate and the voter approval rate, it all calculates off of the prior year's rate. So that NNR rate this year would impact what rates we might propose in future years. Uh, and that's why we have just estimated um, about an $86 million impact over the course of five years. And that is a, on the low side, a conservative estimate. So I did, because uh, it definitely gets complicated with the state requirements. Uh, I did wanna go through that aspect of where you will see in different places where we are comparing the change from last year's rate to this year's rate the rates themselves, and then other places where we are comparing this year's proposed rate against the no new revenue rate. <clears throat> so with that outlined, I then also wanted to show uh, where our tax rate is in, in comparison to other community colleges. We do value uh, consideration for our taxpayers and doing what we can to keep a low tax rate. Plus we have a healthy tax base uh, so we are uh, proud of this, that you can see over the 15 year history of tax rates, we have consistently kept our rate uh, below the state average tax rate. So with that proposal, we do also have to follow a very prescribed calendar for the board's consideration of the proposed rate. Uh, a lot of this has already happened. Uh, we are uh, at the end of this uh, calendar that we need to follow. So the first thing that happens that really kicks off the entire process is when we receive the certified values from the appraisal districts. Uh, that happened this year on August 31st is when we receive those appraised values. Only then can we really start doing all of the worksheet calculations with those values. Uh, with that calculation, the board then had a meeting on September 20th to officially propose the tax rate uh, and to set the public hearing. Uh, so the public hearing was noticed in the newspapers um, and that is what we are currently doing right now. Uh, October 20th is the public hearing on the proposed tax rate. A separate action, but also scheduled for today is the board meeting <laughs> To, to actually take up consideration of these proposed tax rates. So that is the calendar. I appreciate, uh, oh, I went to the next one. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Jennifer. Colleagues, do you have any questions or comments? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. <clears throat> so the next item is uh, the chair announcing uh, the date, time and place of the meeting. Um, so the date, time, and place of the meeting at the board will be vote on the proposed tax rate, the date Thursday, October 20th, 2022, the time at 2 p.m. And the place is Lone Star College System Office, the Woodlands Training and Development Center, also known as the boardroom, 5000 Research Forest Drive, the Woodlands, Texas, 77381. Uh, at this moment, the chair um, adjourns the tax rate public hearing. The chair reconvenes a special meeting on the tax rate. Um, Desiree, do we have a public comment? We have no more comments. Thank you, ma'am. 
Our next item is the uh, consideration of approval resolution. So there's something special that I have to say. <clears throat> Uh, the motion to amend the MNO tax rate resolution. I, sorry, I, Chair Sandivar, move that an amendment be made to the resolution and ordinance levying the maintenance and operations component of the ad valorem tax rate for tax year 2022. The amendment to the resolution is to change one word in section two from lowered to raised. Before we do the amendment, to get a motion and a, a second to open the item for discussion. I'm sorry, I missed it. Just get an open. May I have a, a motion and a second? Motion. Second. Okay, perfect. So now you can move to amend. Yeah. Okay. So I, Chair Saldiva, move that an amendment be made to the resolution and ordinance levying the maintenance operations component of the ad valorem tax rate for tax year 2022. The amendment to the resolution is to change one word in section two from lower to raised. The sentence in section two of the resolution currently reads, the tax rate will effectively be lowered by 7.91%. This amendment would change that sentence to read, the tax rate will effectively be raised by 7.91%. The proposed maintenance and operations tax rate is 7.9% lower than last year's MNO tax rate of 8.0 cents. However, the proposed MNO tax rate is also 7.9% higher than the no new revenue rate for maintenance and operations. The proposed rate will raise additional tax revenues due to growth in property values. So this amendment to say raised instead of lowered, will be better match the spirit and intention of the state to communicate the impact of growth and property value on the tax payer. Do we have any um, questions or comments? Can I have a second on the amendment, please? Second. second. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed? Um, item passes. Thank you. The, the, amendment. The, the amendment passes. Uh, next one is the motion to adopt uh, the property tax rate. So we are adopting item A as amended. So we are adopting item A as amendment. So I, Chair Saldiva, move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 0 0.0737 per 100 assessed valuations, which is effectively a 7.91% increase in the tax rate. This rate is lower than the FY 2022 maintenance and operation tax rate, but will contribute additional revenue due to the increase in property values. Can I have a second? Second. Perfect. So I will do a roll call for this. Sorry, any questions or comments before I do roll call? Okay. So let's do a roll call. Um, Trustee uh, Kane? Aye. Trustee Murillo? Aye. Trustee Stoma? Aye. Trustee Vote? Aye. And Trustee Sullivan? Aye. And myself, I. Okay, the item passes. <clears throat> so just to note, we have two trustees absent, Trustee Wilson and Trustee Pierce. So our next item is the motion to adopt a property tax rate. So I, Chair Saldivar, move that the property tax rate be increased by the adoption of a tax rate of 0 0.0341 per 100 assessed valuations, which is effectively a 46.35% increase in the tax rate. 
This is for the interest in sinking component of the ad valorem tax year. Can I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you. So I will do, uh, do you have any comments or questions? Okay, I will do a roll call. <clears throat> Trustee um, Sullivan? Aye. Trustee Vote? Aye. Trustee Stoma? Aye. Trustee Murillo? Aye. And Trustee Kane? Aye. Myself, aye. Okay, uh, motion passes. And then we have two absent trustees, uh, Trustee Wilson and Trustee Pierce. <clears throat> okay. Um, so the next item is um, the chair will announce the can canceling of the public hearing. So I, Miriam Saldivar would like to announce that the special board meeting and public hearing that has been noticed for October 27th at 2 p.m. is canceled. The administration will ensure a proper retraction is made of the notice for this meeting. Thank you, trustees. Um, our next item is the suggested future agenda items. Do we have any future just, um, agenda items? All right, so hearing none, it is 2.21 p.m. and the chair adjourns this meeting. Thank you. Thank you.